On this episode of Real Christianity, we're going to be talking about man as the glory of God. What does that really mean? All that and more coming up right now. Welcome to this episode of Real Christianity. My name is Dale Partridge. We are excited to have you back. Honestly, we have been a little bit absent, have missed a couple of weeks. We're still transitioning up to our new location up in Prescott, Arizona. And that's our office is actually headquartered down the mountain. So it's been a bit for us to get down to the studio. Uh, I also don't have, if you're watching the video, I don't have the same mic that I'm usually using, and we're going to be using a different mic today, and that's okay. Um, but this episode, I think, is going to be a really important episode. We're talking about man as the glory of God. What does that really mean? In fact, what is glory, and how do we define glory according to Scripture? And so if you're a regular listener, uh, I want you to know that we appreciate you spending time and your commitment to listening to this podcast. One thing, we just finished our brand new book, Simple Theology, A Gospel Catechism for Kids. It's now available. In fact, sitting from me, maybe, uh, I don't know, Trevor, why don't you go grab one of these books and I'll actually show it to people that are watching the video here. We got four pallets of these books, which is a beautiful, beautiful book. And you can see this here in the video, Simple Theology, A Gospel Catechism for Kids. It is, if you're listening to this, I'll give you a description. It's got this beautiful gold foiling cover on this burgundy uh, hard case book with cream paper. It's got a satin ribbon marker, a Smithsone binding. And what it is, it's a hundred questions to teach your kids the gospel. A hundred questions that'll walk your kids through what it means to believe in Christ. And you can talk through church and anthropology and systematics and all these things in a hundred steps, hundred questions. It also is set up so that you can have answers for little kids, uh, you know, medium kids and older kids. I don't know what we call them medium kids, right? But you know what I'm saying. Um, so you can pick up a copy of that Simple Theology at our uh, store at shop.relearn.org, or I think the URL is relearn.org forward slash simple, and that'll take you there. Great, great present for Christmas if you're watching it in the pre-Christmas months, but that would be a great uh, gift to have to your family or to some other family. So again, let's jump into this episode of Real Christianity, Man as the Glory of God. Uh, I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 11, 7 through 9. It says, For a man ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and glory of God. But woman is the glory of man. For man was not made from woman, but woman from man. Neither was man created for woman, but woman for man." End quote. Okay, this might be one of the more controversial passages of scripture. And yes, I did write an entire book on this passage of scripture, uh, a book called A Cover for Glory, speaking about head coverings. I'm not going to be talking about head coverings in this episode. So, we're going to just be going on the conversation more with the men here. But a couple things is that this is a controversial passage of scripture because it claims that men are the image and glory of God, but woman is the glory of man. Really what this is saying is that a woman is not the glory of God. She's the glory of man. And it doesn't mean that she's not made in the image of God. She certainly is made in the image of God. We know that from Genesis. Um, but we are different. And truly, we are different in the sense that we have different glories. And we will understand what that means here in a second. Um, glory being defined really is the rightful, radiant substance of a particular object. That's what it means to be glorious or what glory is. And I'm going to explain just to give you a better grasp of what I mean by that. It's the correct and true expression of something. That is what makes it glorious. Glory To be glorious is the correct and rightful expression of a particular object. And so everything has a corresponding glory, but all glories are essentially subglories of God because we don't define what is glorious. Um, God is the one that defines what is glory. So let me give you an example. 
this table, if you're watching this on video, is glorious because it upholds my computer and this microphone. It's fulfilling its God-designed purpose or its man-designed purpose in this particular instance. But if we're talking about a glorious man, it's that a man is walking out what is what he's been designed to do. And to be a glorious woman uh, is to be a woman that is doing and carrying out what she is designed to do. That's what makes her glorious. And so you can have a glorious son and a glorious daughter, and you can have a glorious worker, and you can have an, a glorious um, employee. You can have an, a, a glorious, uh, you know, boxer, an, a, a glorious uh, pie, a glorious uh, living room. Whatever it might be, these glories are, uh, to be glorious, we essentially need to understand how God intended those things to be. And so when we give glory to things that are not glorious or are operating under different definitions of glory, we pervert God's glory. We pervert the gloriness of a particular object. And, and so um, we want to understand God's design for particular things, for men, for women, for children, for sons, for daughters, for grandparents, uh, for employees, for, uh, for church, for worship, for pastors. Because when we have a clear understanding of what those things are, according to God's word, we can determine if they are glorious or if they are not glorious. And so um, to understand God's glory, like his specific glory, uh, I would say that the, the most purest form of God's glory is his holiness, right? It's what makes him totally separate from us. Uh, his his glory is something that we recognize in his perfectness. And we try to explain his glory. First uh, Chronicles 29, 13 says, and now we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. So the author is attempting to assign like a human made attribute to capture the weight, the glory uh, or holiness or magnificence of God's name. And again, uh, to the degree we grasp, we grasp glory is the degree we grasp God. Because if you, if you don't grasp God or truth or the scriptures, um, we won't grasp what is glorious. In fact, we will call things that are not glorious, glorious, and we will miss things that are glorious and calling them something else. And so glory needs to be uh, carried. It's a, it's a substance uh, that can be beheld by the person observing it. C.S. Lewis's book, The Weight of Glory, he says, quote, the load or weight or burden of glory should be laid daily on my back, a load so heavy that only humility can carry it, and the backs of the proud will be broken, end quote. Uh, he might be talking about the, the glory of the gospel here, um, the load or weight or burden of, of glory, of what it is like what is the gospel? What is a glorious gospel? It's a glorious gospel is one that saves. It accomplishes what it was designed to do. And this load is so heavy when you understand the gospel that Lewis says that the only way to carry it is humility and it'll break the, bra the backs of the proud. And so to be glorious is essentially to do what you were designed to do. And uh, glory radiates from the one that walks out out their divinely appointed duty, being, and role. Um, so it's not just being, right? Um, you know, I'm, I'm being a man just being here, right? And, and that's glorious in some degree. Um, now, so that's why a perversion of the transgender movement is not glorious. It's a perversion of glory. And, uh, but I also, not just as a man, I'm also a husband, and I'm also a father, and I'm also a pastor. And so there are particular glories that can be had. Um, glory is out there to be taken, uh, to be grasped, um, to, to be a, a glorious individual in whatever particular role you may be playing. Uh, Jesus does this perfectly. Hebrews 1.3 says, quote, he is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. And so Jesus is the radiant expression 
the radiant substance uh, of God's glory because he is perfectly carrying out um, what he was designed to do as the God-man on earth. He's also perfectly God, and so he is perfectly glorious as a Savior. He's a glorious Savior. He's a glorious sacrifice. Um, and so a glorious man uh, or woman is one who embodies the biblical manhood uh, and womanhood in submission to their particular role. So uh, men are glorious because, or, I'll say this, let me explain this. Men are the glory of God because they were created by God and from God. Uh, women were created uh, uh, from man, um, out of man's side, uh, and by God. So they're, they're holding the glory of man. Uh, they reflect the one that they represent. And men reflect the one that they came from and represent. And so, so men come from the dust, but made from God. Um, and we are glory. We have the, the, the glory of God upon men because we're reflecting the one whom, whom we came. And then a woman is glorious in the sense that she is the glory of mankind, of humanity, uh, because she came from Adam. And so she's reflecting the glory of man. In fact, this is the whole purpose of my book, A Cover for Glory, is that the reason that a woman would cover her hair uh, or cover her head, glory uh, radiates and shines through the head. Um, this is all over scripture and through Paul's um, uh, teachings of 1 Corinthians. And when a woman uh, is worshiping, she is radiating the glory of mankind in the presence of God. And we are not to glory as men in the presence of God. Um, and so women are to cover that glory. And uh, men are to uncover their heads so that they can because they radiate the glory of God, they will uh, essentially be representing um, a glorious act being uncovered. And a woman should cover the glory of mankind um, so that she's not essentially boasting her glory in the presence of God's glory. So a lot there, you can pick up a copy, uh, relearn.org forward slash glory, if you wanna learn more about that reality there. And so, um, as we know, again, Adam and Eve have, they have different glories. Uh, they're, they're both made in the image of God, but they're different glories. They're imaging different aspects of, of God. So Adam's glory is imaged in the authority given to him through creation, order, and dominion. So Adam is, a, is to be a ruler like God. And so when he rules according to God's will, uh, he's glorious because he is like God in the sense that he is a ruling. He's a ruler like God. Uh, Eve's glory is imaged in submitting and helping Adam. That's what she was designed to do. Charles Hodge put it this way. He says, quote, woman is not designed to reflect the glory of God as a ruler, end quote. So Eve's purpose was never to rule or to be like, uh, you know, a side-by-side -side ruler with Adam but to help Adam rule. And through the covenant nature of their marriage and the work, yes, there, there, there is a sense where they are uh, ruling as one. But in terms of roles and duties and being, um, you know, she is to ornament her husband who is the, the ruler and the primary uh, ruler in, in this uh, narrative. And this is something that's very important. So uh, we talk about, actually, I'll give you I'll give you an explanation here. Uh, this is a, a, I don't know who originally said it, but I thought it was helpful. He said, um, the woman is like the glory of the moon. While she is made by the same creator who made the sun, uh, her purpose is not to be the sun, but to reflect the sun. Um, the late uh, theologian G.W. Knight says, quote, the man reflects the one who directly created him. And thus also the woman will inevitably reflect the one whom she was created, namely man. I kind of already said that, but there's another version of that. Um, another way to understand glory is to understand it as an expression of pride and joy. Um, so this is, again, it's essentially the recognition. I'm so proud because I see that gloriousness 
that's occurring before my eyes. You're operating according to your design. And so it's the substance of a thing that makes us proud or uh, pleasant or uh, according to God's will, righteous, uh, upright. Uh, 1 Corinthians eleven fifteen 15 uh, sees that a woman's hair is a glory to her. That is that it is the particular substance on her body um, that shows that she is a woman. It's a glory to her. It makes her take a, take a, a woman's long hair away. And it is a shame to a woman. Um, now, I'm not saying that there's all these circumstances that are unique and sicknesses and all those things, but I'm talking about generally these, you know, women that are maybe lesbians that want to cut their hair off or look like boys or whatever it may be. Um, a woman's hair is glorious to her because it's actually the thing that helps identify her gloriousness as a female. And, uh, you know, we, le- we look in Proverbs 20, 29, it says the glory of young men is their strength, end quote. And so when you see a young man, their strength is what uh, is the recognizable substance of what is glorious, is they're strong. And uh, their strength is the representative reality of their rightful design, that they are men and strong. It's what they are to be. And so um, these are just basic fundamentals around what is glory and why it's important. And so you want to teach your children uh, and teach yourself uh, what is a glorious man and what is a glorious woman and, and what is a glorious church member and what is a glorious uh, coach and what is a, a glorious prayer life and what is a glorious um, you know, parenting regimen? What's a glorious schedule? You can see how deep this goes in the sense that we are truly uh, lost to define glory if we don't know the truth about particular realities. And so the more you know scripture, the more you know the gospel, the more you know God's will for particular realities uh, all around creation, the more you have an opportunity to be glorious for God. And so glory is something that should be talked about in your home. It's something that I believe is very helpful for uh, families and for children. These are languages that are are, are words and, and a glossary of terms that we should be implementing into our home. They should be familiar topics. These are Bible words. These are good words. You know, the, you know, we shouldn't shy away from words like propitiation and majesty and glory and, and honor and atonement and sacrifice. I mean, these are biblical words. And so we want to understand what those words mean. And so my encouragement to you guys, as we kind of close out this episode here, is that you would essentially uh, fight to understand glory and teach your family what it means to be a glorious family so that you guys can be recognized that the rightful radiant substance of your life or your lives would be seen and that others would be curious. Um, you know, we know it's, what is it? First Peter, um, you know, always be ready uh, to give a defense for the hope that is in you and do so with meekness and fear. And this means that there's a recognizable reality uh, that evangelistic isn't, sometimes it's, it's actually recognized. People come up to you with a curiosity. Hey, uh, tell me about why you live this way. They're, they're recognizing glory. They're recognizing peace. They're recognizing hope. Uh, you need to be ready. And so, so glory is what actually radiates to the world. And it's something that we should be aiming for. So Hopefully this was a helpful, quick episode on glory. And we're going to continue that conversation between glory and authority on the next episode. Uh, If you haven't left a review on the podcast, those reviews really do help our uh, podcast continue to find new listeners. If you just go to your podcast app, you don't even have to write anything. You can just tap the stars. But it really does help the exposure of our show. And more people get to hear biblical truth and, um, and hear the gospel through this show. And so we thank you guys for your support. Uh, My name is Dale Partridge. This is Real Christianity. We'll see you next time.